Mm -hmm. Hello, and thank you for joining us. My name is Tian brown Sampson and I am a resident assistant producer at Theatre 503, and I am the producer and curator for this online Rapid Write Response. Now, we've been doing Rapid Write Response at 503 for 10 years now, but nothing like this. We have moved everything online. We are talking online writers' nights, online rehearsals, and online streaming and viewing of this show. But, Working online really does have its benefits because we've been able to reach out and connect with a greater number of creators than we have ever been able to do before. We have had over 150 writers participate in our two online writers nights, which has meant we have received a record number of 81 submissions for this rapid write response. And also for this particular show, we had writers, directors and actors based outside of London participating. We're talking regionally as well as internationally. And for a theatre based in London, that's not an opportunity we often have happen. We want to say thank you from the 503 team to all the cast and creators involved, to the Paper Cup team, and of course to you, our audience, for your ongoing support. We hope you enjoy the show. Would you say I'm more aubergine or banana? Why are you asking me that? You've seen it enough times, this guy in Grindr wants to know. Well, I think aubergine and banana are both just metaphors for big, aren't they, so? No. An aubergine sort of goes when a banana is more like... Mine doesn't really bend though, does it? No, not really. But then it's not super thick, like an aubergine. Carrot? I say carrots. No. Cucumber. Is on grinder already then, eh? Well, I'm gonna have to replace you, aren't I? Need to find a new friends with benefits thing. Hey, I never said friends with benefits. Well, we're friends, aren't we? Yeah. And we had a lot of sex, didn't we? Yeah. But friends with benefits? Not really what I said, is it? Okay, Mr. Mansplainer, I'll remember what you said. I presume you mean what you said when I told you I loved you. Yeah. I said, I love you. I know. And then you left a big long pause, like you do, with my words floating out there, lingering desperately on the air of the silence, with my heart dangling in between your hands for what felt like eternity. And then you said, I. And then you left another big pause, presumably to extend my longing suffering for as much as possible and give me just enough time to fill myself with the hope that you'd complete that sentence with love you too, before saying, <laughs> just don't see us in that way. I'm sorry, Sammy. I think you're more of a what's it. I am not a what's it. Oh, I don't mean like a normal what's it. I mean like, like a, a big M&S what's it that you buy for picnics. Tesco's finest, what's it? Sainsbury's taste the difference, what's it? You know I don't like it when you comment on that. Do I know? You never told me. I'm, I'm just supposed to work it out by the fact that you huff or tut. <laughs> no, I might not be as big as you, but I am at least a courgette. A pickled one, maybe. You know, when you recount that story, you're missing one key part. Why would you tell me you love me right after I told you that I think we should stop sleeping together? Why wouldn't I? Well, in this case, because I wanted us to stay flatmates. Because that's why I moved in. You know, I like you. I like the flat. I should never have complicated it by sleeping together. Sleeping together? And spooning together, and watching films together, they're buying presents for each other, finishing each other's sentences. I mean, you can see where I got confused. Yes, yeah, yeah, maybe I can. But it didn't mean you had to say that after I told you that I wanted to end it. You can't be flatmates with someone who loves you. No, I can't. Why not? Well, I don't know, maybe because it's just too weird, okay? Well, I'm pleased I said it. Shouldn't have said it when you knew I didn't feel the same way. Again, how did I know? How did I know? You... I don't know how you feel about anything. 
In spite of all the lovely things that we did together, you never gave me much direct insight in, into here. Into here. You don't even smile when you see me. You don't ever look me in the eye. Oh, I don't want to have this out again, all right? Decision's been made. I hope we can be friends again in the future. That's about the nicest thing you've ever said to me. This guy that I'm chatting to is one of the ones we were trying to arrange a threesome with, remember? He's asking if we still come as a pair. Well, you know the answer to that one. He's asking about yours now, what shall I tell him? Where do we land? What's it or pickle? You tell him that you want to meet him alone. You're sort of textured though, aren't you? Ridges you've got, you know like how a croissant sometimes has ridges oh, on it? Where? It's not the shape of a croissant. Toffee crisp! That's what you are. A mini one for lunch boxes. Fuck off! Do you know what's always interested me about you, Rick? I presume you're going to tell me whether I want to know or not. You like to be the little spoon. What? You're larger than me physically and you're the top. So usually that would make you the big spoon for the cuddles after all the sex. But you like to be the little spoon. Well, maybe I just thought that you like to be the big spoon so I thought no, I'd just let you. It's not that. I feel you relax when I hug you like that. You don't do it when we hug normally. We almost never hug normally, face to face. But when you can't see me, you lean back into me and your whole body relaxes and you do this peaceful sigh. And I think it's because you feel safe. Safe? Yeah, I think you crave safety. Uh, I think you feel safer when you don't let anyone in. I, I literally don't know what you're on about. It's easier and safer for you to not open your heart up and let somebody inside. Because you're a man. Like a man's man. I think we're both men's men, aren't we? You know what I mean. You pride yourself on being a man. You pride yourself on your masculinity. That's why your what's it bothers you. Your what's it doesn't bother you. What do you want me to be then? I mean, just because I'm not prancing about listening to Kylie doesn't make me any less gay. I didn't say know? that. No, yeah, you insinuated it. You think, like, just like lots of other people out there, that gay guys who aren't camp and feminine are somehow acting. You think I'm pretending to be manlier than I am, huh? I'm out, okay? I'm fine. I know I'm gay. Everybody knows I'm gay. You're a gay butt. Oh, a, a gay butt? You say things like, yeah, I'm gay, but I don't like Kylie. Or, yeah, I'm gay, but I support Millwall. I support West Ham. You're the one that equates gayness with femininity. Not me. You're the one saying but. And I don't think you're pretending. I think that's who you are, but it doesn't make it any less of a shame. Oh, why can't you just accept it? I'm not looking for a relationship. That is allowed. Of course. But why? Is it because you're so happy on your own, living your best life? Or is it because of something else? I'm just not into the lovey-dovey stuff, okay? I like to be... Safe. It's safe, Rick. It's safer for you not to let anyone in. No, I just, uh, I like to be... In control? Yeah, yeah, in control. Giving up a piece of your heart to somebody else, handing over a fragile part of you to them means giving up control and it, it means being less safe. Yes, you're right. So maybe it's easier to, to carry on as I am. You know, in control, supporting West Ham, being a man's man. What the fuck is wrong with that? It's not very brave, is it? Manly men are the brave ones, yeah, because they chase wasps away or do loads of press-ups or drink that extra pint when they're already blind drunk. But tell me this, who's the brave one here? Who's the one brave enough to tell someone they love them and lay their vulnerability bare. You know, you're missing one of the best parts about being gay. Honestly and truly, opening yourself up to yourself. It's being comfortable with who you are. Looking into every part of you and accepting it all. And being at peace with your own vulnerability. 
might not be very uh, brave. It's more here brave. You could stay here and be a little less safe, but a little more brave. What, you're outmanning me here, eh? Doing a bit of mansplaining back to me. But I guess I'm back to grinder now. I do feel safe with you, Sammy. Really? I do. I trust you. Why are you so cold with me after all this time? Why not let me in? Because... If I let you in, I... I have to let me in too. Strawberries, red flowers, pendulum, red, crimson, peach, pink, white, warm, cold, strawberries, red. Pendulum. Hi. Hello. You all right? Yeah, fine. Not good. Been wandering around all day. You? Yeah, good. All good. Were you saying something? Sorry? Just now, I thought you were saying something. Oh, right, yeah, I was trying to remember something. It's right at the front of my mind all the time. I can never quite reach it. You know like when you wake up from a really vivid dream? And one and second, it's impossible to believe it wasn't your reality. And the next, you're desperately scrambling around to fit the pieces together. Exactly that, yeah. Beautiful, isn't it? Even now? Really is. Even more beautiful now, I'd argue. You reckon? I do. Makes me appreciate it even more. I don't know. Best view in the world. Nowhere else I'd rather be. Do you come here a lot? Yeah. I used to camp just down there. But then um, me and my brothers turned into angry teenagers. So we uh, started renting a cottage with Wi Fi. Mum and Dad weren't happy. But uh, they started getting old, moaning about their joints. They saw sense. Do you think you'd keep coming back here? Of course. Like you said, it's beautiful. Sorry, I just realised I never got your name. Georgie. Will, are you from round here? It sounds like you are. Nearby. Nice. I come here a lot too. Yeah? Yeah. I came here last summer for my best friend's wedding last August when uh, up at the castle. And just about me get out through the mist there. Strawberries, red flowers. Pendulum, red, crimson, peach, pink, white, warm, cold. Are you alright? Sorry. Shit. I thought I had it. Never mind. I just realised I never got your name. Are you serious? What? We've already done this. Done what? I've told you my name, it's Georgie. Oh, right, yeah, Georgie, of course, yeah. Sorry, my head's a bit, uh... So you, you do a lot of walking? I do, actually. Yeah, do you enjoy it? Not really. I, uh, find it's something to do, passes the time. But you can keep walking for hours and hours, till your feet hurt and you think you surely reached the end of the earth. And then somehow you still keep going. World keeps on turning, so you keep on walking. Like one massive fucking conveyor belt. Yes, there it passes the time. Gives me time to think. That's all I do here, yeah, really. Is think. Stand there and try to remember stuff and think about things. 
some of the best memories of my life thanks to this place. Just, just need to stand here and remember them all. Where are they now? Your family? Where? They, um, they died. Summer. August was gone. Dad was driving, but he was laughing at the same time. He did this thing where he was laughing, where he threw his head back and his shoulders shook like mad. And his eyes can't have been off the road for more than a second, but it was dark. And the other car came out of nowhere and we hit each other. And it was mad because the middle passenger seat is most likely to die in a car accident. And I always sat there. Middle child, middle seat. And I don't remember anything after that. Apparently I was holding a body when the ambulance arrived, but from the other car, the only other survivor. Said I was a hero. Said what I did was very brave. I don't want to be brave. I don't want to have to keep coming back here and thinking and remembering and not remembering. I wish strawberries, red flowers, pendulum, crimson, red, peach, pink, white, warm, cold. I'm so sorry. That was intense. I don't even know your name. Georgie. Georgie, right, I'm Will. We've met before, sort of. We've met. I'm so sorry. I met where they buried. What? Your family, when you asked, when I asked before about where they are, I meant where they buried. When did we meet? Summer, August, just gone. Strawberries. His tie, his tie had strawberries on flowers, on your dress, it was pink and white. And your hands, your hands, they had they had they had makeup all over them, peach, crimson, pendulum, your necklace hanging off you, swinging. You were standing there holding me. Your brothers were either side. Middle child, middle seat. No lipstick. Lipstick gone, just red. Just red, red, red. Everywhere. And the red is warm, but his body's cold. They picked me up. They carried me. They left the others. They left me. They weren't there anymore, they were, they were somewhere else. Somewhere between the seats they were thrown from and the windows, they shattered in a different time, in a different place, thousands of miles away. They weren't here anymore. I, I can't look back at that road. I, I don't want to remember. I don't think what you did was brave, Will. I think it was instinctive. And I know this must sound incredibly ungrateful, seeing as you saved me life, but I wish you hadn't. I wish you died. That way we'd both be rotten away in the ground. Me with my husband and you with your family. But instead we're still here rotting away. But breathing while we do it. And walking. I wish I had died too. But at least we can both agree on that. The world is one big, fucking massive conveyor belt, Will. And no matter how hard you try to stand there and think about all your problems and make it stop, it's just going to keep on turning, so you may as well walk along with it. Where are you going? We've still got time. 
May as well use it while you're here. Do you mind if I join you? Why are you in here on your Todd? I was having too much fun. Nan's just seen Ben barefoot in the kitchen and she's all like, oh, get your slippers on, you'll catch your death. We're all pissing ourselves. You're not leaving, are you? Beth. You just got here. I'm tired. And you shouldn't be drinking that. Right, Dad. Give it here. Mm -mm. It's fruity. Right, well, say goodnight to Mum for me. What's wrong with you? Nothing, I just... I don't feel well. Tummy ache? Yeah. Liar. God, to be honest, Beth. Here we go. This whole thing, the fucking banner, it's a bit... It's a party. It's sensitive. Who? Well, what are we meant to be celebrating? Um, that we've missed our big brother and that we're happy he's home. <laughs> he's not a hero. I never said he was... Anyway, a... I'm a pacifist. You're a dickhead, that's what you are. You're not sulking because he called you a... No. No. He didn't mean it. Why do you say it then? He was only messing. In front of everyone and you all just let him. I'm here now, aren't I? Look at me being an ally. <laughs> yeah, I... It was a fucking shitty thing for him to say, but... I mean, who even uses that word anymore? You're so touchy. Stop being a fucking fairy, bro. He's a bit drunk. We're all a bit drunk. He's not just drunk, though, is he? What's that supposed to mean? Go back to the party, Beth. Party, Beth. No. He wouldn't, not with Mum around and with Nan. He's never stopped him before. He hasn't done that in months, and you'd know if you'd... If I what? Just speak to him. Have a drink, he, he's really grown up. He's 26, it's a bit fucking late. He has, you, you'd be dead impressed, it's really... Kicked him into shape, you know, all the, all the structure and the discipline and, and the fitness. He's got like a, a, a purpose. I know you don't want to hear this, Beth, but... He's been going to NA meetings. He's got a sponsor, another squaddy. A whoopee. Honest. He apologised to me, Rudes. He said sorry and, and he really, really means it. Oh, so he's nice now. Don't... He's a nice person now, is he? He fucks off for six months to blow up some strangers in a desert and now he's all reflective. No, he never. He never blew anyone up. And what was he doing out there then? Giving out sweeties? Grow up. He wants to talk to you. He wants to apologise. He said that then, yeah. Do it for Mum. Don't ruin this for her. She's done a buffet. Do it for me. I'm really not trying to be a dick here, Beth, but... He's changed. He has. Swear down. That's from his room. What are you sneaking in his room for? Because I don't believe a word of it. It's probably old. He hasn't slept there in ages. It's, not it's though, old. is it? She should kick him out again. She should. Not throw him a fucking party. You just give him... A selfish prick. You know, I bet he's stealing from her and... Stop it. That's funny. And giving an arsehole a gun doesn't make him less of an arsehole. Coming back is hard. It's a change. He has to... Get used to it all. Get used to us not having that routine. It must be really scary. He's not a toddler. If he's such a big man, he can take care of himself. God, I don't want him near you, Beth. He's seen stuff as well. <laughs> he's seen really... I mean, Afghanistan's not like Butlins. I mean, pff, who knew? You cut him off, Rudy. Because of shit like this. He's come home. He's got sweet fuck all to do, so he's doing beak in his mum's house. It's going to be just like it was before, only worse, because now he's having bad dreams about sand and blood. A queen of fucking country. Beth. Beth, don't. Yeah, very mature. You're going to make yourself sick. <coughs> you little shit. He wrote to you and you could have written back. My fault then. And there was stuff he couldn't tell mum. 
and he couldn't tell you, so he told me instead, and it was scary. His dickhead to do that to you. I listened to him. He asked after you. Every time. He loves you, Rude's loads. It's our song. I just took a DNA test turn. <laughs> They'll be wondering where we've got to. I'm going home, Beth. Call me in the morning, yeah? You're doing it again. What? Leaving me on my own with it. The amount of times he stuck up to you, the stuff that them lads would say to him about you, they threatened him. That's different. You're both as bad as each other. Oh, Beth, please. No, okay. I just don't think I can do it again. You won't have to. He was blue and his sick was all on my hoodie. I know. And my trainers and his eyes went back. I know. And his head was jerking like... He never said thank you, and then he, he left. He did really well. I'm not doing it again. I keep thinking things when maybe... And sometimes when he eats toast or he tags you in fucking Facebook memes, I think maybe... But they never... Nothing ever... It's all just the same thing. Mum won't cope. She's tougher than you think. I'm going to tell her. Don't. If he's staying here, she has to know. No, Rudy, it'll make things worse. I won't keep secrets for him. It's mine. The... It's mine. Don't lie for him, Beth. I'm not lying. He found me with it in the shed and he took it off me. You don't have to lie for I'm him. I'm not. Swear down, it is mine. You know? No. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to snap his neck. It's not his fault. Where'd you get it from? Did he give you a number? Fuck it, no. No, he didn't. I got it from a friend. Which friend? I didn't take it. Honest, that was the first time. I just, I, wa I wanted to be ready. Ready for what? When he came back, I thought, I've been really scared and it's been really busy inside my head and I thought that with him coming home he wouldn't be able to handle it and it'd be like it was before and I wanted to be ready I wanted to be able to help him like you used to do I wanted to understand it sort of know what you're up against sort of thing Jesus Beth I'm sorry I'm really really sorry <laughs> that doesn't make any sense honest what were you thinking it was stupid I was just Really fucking stupid. I just wanted everyone to stop. He was so mad at me, Rudy. Please don't be mad at me. Please, I just, I missed him. Really missed him. But he took it off me. What Ben did? Yeah, he said, don't be a dickhead, Beth. Didn't throw it away though, did he? Guess not. No. I don't know what to do. But if you go, that'll be a really bad thing. Give that in. That's fucking disgusting. <laughs> I like it, it tastes like sweets. Come on then. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go say hello to Rambo. They called him a fine specimen of a man. We're at the jobs fair at Andes High School, and so far so good. I've acquired a new tote bag and at least seven branded pants. Little Miranda is covered in stickers and high on gummy worms. She sat proud on Jason's shoulders and is trailing behind a little, as he does sometimes. And then, what a fine specimen of a man. A voice booms from one of the tables. We, we turn to find, you know, where it came from. And my heart trembles a little. Military table. 
It seems a man dressed head to toe in camo gear has taken a shine to Andy. Is this your boy? What a perfect specimen. And in the breath before we're due to bound to reply, I just about hear his eyes light up. Not Andy's. Jason's. It was his father's eyes that lit up like Christmas. We're very proud of him too, sir. Sir. Jason never says sir. Not since he waited tables at Wendy's when we were kids has he ever said sir. And never meant it. I go over and lay a hand on Andy's shoulders just to steady myself, I think. I say any of these firms would be lucky to have him. I don't think Andy feels it. It's even taking in any words, even. He's just basking in the glow of these two men smiling. Golden boy. I persist. These software reps, they were very impressed, weren't they, Andy? We got a whole mess of flies to sift through. In fact, we best be going. Ah, those tech heads will say anything to get the youngins. We, we're a touch more selective. I try to smile back, but it feels like snarl. Jason, to his credit, has a touch of intuition to him. He senses that I'm restless, coughs nervously. Miranda's much more direct in her approach. Can we go home and watch Paw Patrol now, Mama? That's my girl. Well... I think that's us told. A pleasure. Pleasure meeting you. I stopped myself from saying, sir, ain't no way I'm giving him the satisfaction. Andy politely takes a brochure. Well, I'm sure we'll be seeing you again. Every word delivered to Andy just wrapped up in butter. Mm-hmm. It only occurs to Andy after, as it sometimes does, only in the car ride home that they must have seen something special in him. Even you guys never say that I'm perfect. I even hear him tell Jillian on the phone when I'm taking some laundry up to him later on that night. They call me a perfect specimen, babe. What you think about that? Makes you sound like cattle, Andy. They trying to sell you off to some ranch. I hear her tinny laugh and his goofy chuckle, and I catch my breath like it's precious. I haven't been sleeping well. Jason's noticed, but on a low light, like a dinner spoil. Miranda's much more honest. Mama, why do you always look tired? And every time Andy talks about the fall, you get sad. Andy does want us to be excited, and his dad is, in a way. And it starts a conversation with me, and I can't help but talk about Jillian or Miranda or myself, what I'm up to, the PTA and the food drives, and how many new jobs the new mall will create. I want to fill his head up with what he has now, S see if he sees any of it. I keep waking at dawn and thinking about how the birds cry out each morning from their nests to remind each other that they're still there. So I make a cup of high tea and sit out back. Little me beneath the big West Virginia sky. I find it hard to think that the world seeps out beyond it. How can there be more to it when right now it's so vast? Yesterday morning, 4 a.m. when I got to the stoop, and it was already out there too, wearing some bust-up sweater we'd bought from a theme park. He's broader now. When did he get so big? Morning, huh? How'd you sleep? He's daring me not to overcomplicate it. I try and play along. Oh, lock a lock. Must just be eager to start the day. I'll help you with breakfast. Got no more packing to do. That's sweet, Andy, but it'll be about four hours too early. He listens to the birds. 
basking in the clouds or soaking up the light. Just so. And I wonder if something in him is reconfiguring just a little. Nights in Afghanistan can drop below freezing these days. I thought I'd come out and acclimatize. It's around 60 degrees Fahrenheit out here, but I bought my time. From what I understand it, you may not get deployed that far. You could just be the next state over. He laughs a little. I want to, you know, contribute and lead. I get a feeling that I'm going far. He meets my eyes, trying to suss how that landed. Am I proud of him yet? I'll come back a veteran, my me. Andy from Buttfuck, West Virginia. And I say, I see plenty of West Virginian veterans at the food drive, Andy. He doesn't know that some of them I cut up their food and some of them I walk to the bathroom and some of them I clean up after when their catheters have leaked and they've soiled themselves. Uh, always bring some of his old clothes with me to work just in case they need a spare. They put them on and I have to excuse myself safe crying right there in front of them. I just say to Andy, they're all good men. He smiles, but I can't hug him in case any of that comes pouring out. He wanted one, but I make excuses and turn away. It's making me a mother. I don't want to be. Human beings ain't built for waiting. Jason says I'm trying to move too fast and I need to settle and simmer down. Well, I say I'm not a risotto. I even took that theme park sweater straight to the food drive, gave it to a gentleman, and lasted about 20 minutes before asking for it straight back. Leanne, who works with me, barks, Ow, just what is going on with you, Mandy? I don't know how to tell her. Wars, Leanne, all I'm up to thinking about is wars. I'm thinking of ways to be present. It's what I've been advised to do. I've left the PTA. Miranda is still at kindergarten and it felt too much like forecasting. Couldn't stand to be part of jobs fair planning. Instead, I'm prepping Disney parties and recycling days. I breathe easier there, at least. Oh, and I'm part of a parents group now on Facebook. It's regiment affiliated, but they don't think ill of you if you just post, I miss my boy. I'm quite fond of the crying emoji now. It gets me. Andy even posts sometimes on his own timeline. He's there in these uniforms I'd never dreamt of him wearing. I'm dying to see some color, but he's always Beaming above the beige. Most weekends, Jillian comes over and we bake a pie together and drink wine in the yard and until the sky turns orange. She's muddling through. I tell her, don't you wait for Andy for your life to start. Jason says I should take my own advice. I had hoped with Andy that he might have a whole life of guessing and trying and adjusting like me. But he can't guess there, which is not a life I recognize. And it of course occurred to Andy after, as it does sometimes, that he'd miss us. And I say, we'll be here.
will all still be here. I don't know what I can tell him that's as good as what they pump him with out there. Miranda asks when he's coming home and I smile and I say, you know what? Let's ask him again tomorrow. What happened to you last night? Oh, I just I wasn't feeling right. You weren't replying to any of my texts. Well, I am replying now, and I'm alive, so... Hang on. Why are you hiding? What's on your face? Just, just nothing, Chris. Uh, yes, there is. Let me see. No, I just don't... <sighs> All right, I'll show you. Just don't say anything. I've had the most horrific morning, okay? Uh, is that... Hair, or...? It's a beard. How have you got a beard? I don't know! <laughs> <laughs> Can you just shut up? You said you were no. gonna laugh. Is this a joke? Are you having me on? No! No! Just look at it! I even went to the doctor and she said it's real! It's grown! What did the doctor make of it? Oh, she said it's perfectly natural. That is not perfectly natural. Apparently she said that I've got some extra testosterone present in my body. Extra testosterone? Where did you get extra testosterone from all of a sudden? Oh, wait, I didn't even know women had testosterone in the first place, but then suddenly I've got extra. Yeah, but how? I don't know, Chris, I don't know. She said that apparently it can happen out of the blue and it happens to a lot of women. Hmm. What am I going to do? I've got a date tonight. Oh, with that gorgeous guy. Who happens to be a very good kisser? You'll have to cancel. I can't cancel, Chris. I've cancelled something twice already. Oh, just explain that. Say it was my birthday yesterday. And we booked tickets to go. Oh my god. I just remembered. What? My birthday yesterday. I... Oh shit, this is all my fault. Oh, Chris, what are you on about? Um... You, you know that film um, where this little boy, um, he he makes a birthday wish for his dad not to be able to lie for a whole day. And his yeah, dad's a yeah, lawyer. Yeah, I've heard so it. I've heard about it, yes. Um, well, yesterday, when you all lit the candles on my birthday cake, I wished, you know, after we had the whole conversation about me maybe doing the whole transition thing, and you were really weirded out, and it's fine, Ow. but I made a wish... That you could understand what it was like for me to... But now, look, you've got a beard! And soon you're going to start saying bro all the time, and then you're just no, going to grow... No, that's not it. That's stupid. You haven't done anything. But the good what thing is... you about me being weirded out? I'm not weirded out if you wanted to change. As we're saying, the good thing is... It's only a birthday wish, so it's only going to last 24 hours, just like in the film. So, it won't grow back as long as you... Um... Chris, where are you going? Ta-da! Oh, no, 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 no! Uh, and make sure you go right up to your cheeks. No, you really don't have to talk me through this. I've shaved my legs a thousand times. This is different. Your neck can be really awkward. For example, when you do... <laughs> oh, have you ever tried shaving an ankle? Trust me, you need to be careful. You start from the bottom up, nice and easy. Like this? Yeah, that's it. <sighs> You see what I'm shaving and my eyes are all the way up the ceiling. Uh, you perfect it with years of practice. Trust me. I feel like I'm shaving an armpit or something. Yeah, although you don't have to be as um, careful there. Ah! Ah! God, I've popped myself. You okay? Oh, shit. Oh, look, look, how about. How about pop an artery or something? Like, is this gonna gush out? No, don't be daft. Just splash it with some water. God. 
or use a towel. Just wash that towel after. Oh, I will. Oh. oh, God. You can keep shaving. Even if you cut yourself, you're going to be fine. By the way, I'm, I'm not against you, you know, what we talked about the other day. It's just, uh, it just came out of the blue. It wasn't out of the blue for me. But how long have you actually thought about it? Huh? I can't answer that. It's not like your beard. I didn't just wake up one day and... Although I can't tell you when I exactly started thinking. I just wanna I just want you to be too sure. I want you to be sure. Chris. I'm sure. Because you know, why don't you stop? It's hard to explain. Because well, you're cis, you're a cisgender woman. And you've always been comfortable and that's exactly what I haven't been my whole life. Comfortable. How do I do my chin? You gotta go down on a diagonal. At an angle? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm sorry I've been off about it. Just. I mean, is this gonna be us now? But me teaching you how to shave your legs? Who cares? Who cares if I shave my legs or not? Who cares if I suddenly have my hair long, short? Who cares if I suddenly sprout a pair of tits? Erin, you literally woke up today with hair on your chin. And the doctor said it was natural. Now you've got a beard. And you know what? I couldn't give a fuck. Whatever changes might happen to my body, it's going to be natural for me. I just... I don't want you to treat me any different when it happens. Don't forget your moustache, yeah? Oh, yeah, right. Cool. Oh, yes! <laughs> it's gone! God, I don't look like a... I mean, I look like a... Is this why you wish? So I'd get it? Yeah, it was magic and... I mean, it's nonsense. It wasn't real. I just, you know. No, 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 I think... I think it worked. <sighs> mm. <laughs> what? Is it strange that I missed the beard? Yeah, I wasn't going to say, but you actually really suited it. <laughs> hey, go on and sort those cuts out on your neck or your fella's going to be asking questions. You know what, I can cancel and I can just pop over. We no, can... go out. We just keep living our lives, okay? Nothing's going to change between us. Yeah. Just no more wishing, please, because I don't want to wake up tomorrow with, like, a ball patch or something. No more wishes. Okay. Bye. Bye. Easy. Um, okay. Hi. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I, I can hear you. Hi. <laughs>
sorry um if my internet's a bit no it's all right my mind plays up sometimes so how are you how's things fine yeah uh yeah it's... okay <laughs> you're a doctor now yeah finally <laughs> did you uh, get a job in the department N not here but um uh, maybe at sheffield i've been offered a position so um i'll see what else comes up and you know it it depends oh that's good though uh, sheffield's great the town looks nice yeah it is you should be really proud you deserve it <laughs> and you're okay you're doing all right uh yeah yeah i i am um it's uh it's better than it was good I'm not 100%, but then that's life, <laughs> Louise. Yeah, I know. Actually, I, I have had a bit of a dip recently. Um, it's not, not, nothing too bad. Actually, I, I also wanted to ask you, um, this isn't, um, I, I'm not going to, I'm not trying to be weird or anything. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. I, uh, what is it? Uh, I, I, um, thinking about it, it is a bit weird sounding. Um, Go on. Right. Uh, you don't. You don't remember if I still have the handcuffs, do you? <laughs> um, for the bed. <laughs> yeah, for the bed. That doesn't help, does it? <laughs> no, that that makes it worse. <laughs> you, you know what I mean. This is why you didn't want to text me. Uh, okay, okay, um, it all makes sense. Uh, I actually don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think I have them. I haven't used them since. Oh, I wasn't asking, um, but yeah, I, I, I just couldn't. Hang on, um, let me have a look. Oh, don't worry. Uh, I, I was just checking, really. I mean, I mean it's, not a really, it's not a big thing, so I couldn't really remember who had them. Blank. Uh, don't worry, you can teach me how you used to do the bow tie thing. Um, yeah, sure. I, I don't think they're here. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. Uh, it's fine. Um, not did you use? Let, um, let me just search for some good instructions and I'll send them to you. That's probably the easiest. It was, it was two handcuffs, right? Um, no, two, two Scarves, sorry. Before we got the handcuffs, that's what I meant. Uh, one for a hand, one for a foot. God, if anyone's listening to this conversation. I know, it's a bit sexual. <laughs> it sounds like you got someone in your cellar. Oh, yeah. um, wait, here's a YouTube video. This one looks right. I'm just sending it. Great. Got it. Cool. Thanks. Uh, so, are you having night terrors again? I have one. It, uh, a few days ago. Wasn't well, anything too bad, but I tripped and woke up. Just in case. Are you seeing anyone? Nah. I don't think it's fair to inflict myself on someone just yet. I think you should. I mean, you were so much better with therapy. Oh, sorry. I, I thought you were talking about a relationship. Sorry. Oh, oh my God. Sorry, no. Um, no, I meant... I'm a therapist. Yeah. Uh, I, I suppose I'm not allowed to ask you what's up in that department. Look at my lovers. See, they are legion. Well, well as long as you're happy. I, I'm okay. Uh, but I, I should go and get my dinner out the oven. Right, sure. Thanks for the not. Um, I'll speak to you soon. I mean, I'll speak whenever. I suppose. Yeah. Good luck with everything. Bye. Nice talking. Hello? Hi. Uh, so sorry, did I wake you? Yeah, nearly. Uh, are you okay? Uh, yeah. Uh, basically, I've fallen out of bed and I'm kind of stuck half in and half out. And I can't oh, get aren't done. Oh my god, um, uh... I'm twisting my arm. Do you, do you need me to call the fire department or something? No, 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 definitely not. No, I think I'd rather north through my arm. 
You're such an idiot. God. I know. <laughs> you, you can just pull the trailing end and it should all come undone. Yeah, I tried that and it's just made them way tighter. Did you do it properly? Yeah, I thought I did. I thought I did, did exactly like the video. And actually, I did it exactly like the video. I think when you sent it, it was on that function. You know the one where it plays the next video automatically? So when I went to look at it, it changed. And I did the next knot on the playlist. And it's fucking impossible to undo. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah, I don't really feel like laughing right now. Well, I, I don't know what to do, I'm afraid. Well, don't you have some special insight or something? What, into knots? No, why would I? Because you know more than me. No, no, not that much. I looked that one up specially just for you and learned how to do it. I taught it to you in the Girl Scouts. Girl, guys, and no, we didn't do knots. Oh, then what the hell did they teach you? Well, what the hell did they teach you at the Paris? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't think I was there for the session of knots to secure someone to the bed. Wait. Ah! Oh. Did you get it free? Oh, I got a hand free. You need uh, to make sure there's nothing with sharp edges near the bed. Ah, uh, there isn't. Don't worry. Like, are you still going to your therapist? I'm on a waiting list. How long? I don't know. They didn't know. Is, is everything else okay? Like, has anything triggered it? I don't think so. Look, it just comes in waves. I'll ride this one out and I'll probably be better soon. Probably when I just get a therapist. Okay, is there anything I could do right now? Oh, fucking hell, right. I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to do it in the morning. I'm going to sleep down here. I'm oh, sorry to disturb you. But... Fuck. Night. Hey, um, can, can you see me okay? Yeah, yeah, I can. <laughs> Thanks for letting me ring you. You all right? Is everything okay? Yeah, uh, look, I I need to say something, and I, I, I need you to not take it the, the wrong way. I feel like you're breaking up with me again. Uh, I, I want us to be friends, but I'm not your girlfriend anymore, and I, I just need to ask you not to call me about the night terrors anymore. Right. Okay, I, I didn't realize. Look, I, I know it's only been a few times. Like, I don't think you've done anything wrong and like, do I get why you're messaging me, but I, I can't be worrying about you all the time. It's, it's not doing me any good. I see. Like, every time you call and something's happened, there's a part of me that feels like I'm letting you down. You never let me down. I feel like I might, like, if I, if I hadn't been there and if I hadn't been kind of awake, you would have just jumped out the window. It's okay. I feel like it was... <laughs> no, I'm really fucking scary. I know, I know. I know. And I, I, I can't, I can't stand, I can't keep having it in my head that if I'm not there again, at just the right moment, something will happen. I get it. It's not... Look, I'm sorry, it's not that I don't care about you, it's literally the opposite. I can't sleep some nights because I keep thinking, what if he calls, what if he calls, you know, what if his mother rings and says something has happened and I didn't pick up, I didn't help enough. Look, never think like that. You saved my life, okay? So don't think like that. Look, I'm going to get help because of you and I don't know when, but I'm on all the right waiting lists. It's going to be okay, okay? No more tears. <laughs> we should still keep in touch. Only if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So I was thinking about changing my living room and my bedroom around. And that way I'll be sleeping on the ground floor. That's a good idea. <laughs> I think I'm going to do it. And then you'll know I'll be safe. The irony is that they uh, stopped training us to jump about a year after I left. Did I tell you that? No. Yeah. And I read that this crusty old chief was saying it's a travesty that paratroopers ain't jumping anymore. I thought, no, we bloody ain't, mate. Anyway, I'll let you get on then, shall I? Keep in touch, though, right? Yeah, of course. Bye then. Bye.
I'm falling. Like those bodies we saw fall from the towers. Like watermelons. At their terminal velocity. They began their fall at 32 feet per second. Per second. How long is that and from what height? Well, it depends, but the acceleration is 32 feet per second. Per second. Which means... For every second you fall, the distance you travel increases by 32 feet. For every second. Depending on your mass or something. I'm not a mathematician. I'm not a rocket scientist. I've no idea. But the fall... The fall is fast. And it gets faster. And faster... Until the impact... Uh, the sickening impact. Dead weight. Yeah, I see it. Those pictures. In my mind's eye. Sickening. Uh, so, anyway. I'm falling. And at this point, time seems to slow. Suspended. You have time to think as you fall. Recalling. Remembering that day, those images. Before they stopped transmitting them. Over and over, compulsively. On a loop. Like, no one could really believe it had happened, and they had to see it again and again to convince themselves it was real, like demonstrating a magic trick. I see this coin. See it fall. Slowly. No? Okay, I'll show you again. Just watch carefully this time. It seemed... Illicit. Before they realised, hey, you know what? This is obscene. This is pornography. So yeah, anyway, I'm falling, falling. Alice down the rabbit hole. She takes forever. She has time. For questions. Do cats eat bats? Or do bats eat cats? <laughs> she gets to ask what's happening, which normally in the chaos and confusion of everyday catastrophe, you don't usually have time for. Believe me, I know. But when it happens, You've no time to think, to discuss. It's not rational, logical, step-by-step -step series of premeditated decisions. You don't choose. You don't decide. You are chosen. And so? You fall. You fall. You are the chosen one, and you fall. Falling and thinking. And I'm thinking, how can you possibly compare this to a crime like that? Well, I'm sorry I do. You do if you're me. What, because of the speed? The impact? The huge scope and scale of the event to me? I don't expect you or anyone else to see it this way, because... I'm falling. Into the back of a black cab on Dean Street, and it's late, and it looks like rain. You say? Well, we could split the fare. You say? And we all seem to be going the same way. You say? And we agree. And so we do. And by the way, are these friends of yours? I've no idea. It's not important. It's like it's just you and me in the back of the black cab and we're squeezed up against each other. I'm up against you, your, your coat, your jeans. Your sweat. Damp skin, that smell. That cigarette smell that I hate. Because this was a long time ago and you don't smell that smell so often now, but back then it smelled like... <sighs> I don't know. Like being grown up. And you lean forward and you yell an address at the driver and then you fall back. I fall back. Falling. And you turn your damp face to mine and you smile. For no reason at all. And I fall. I am falling. And we are young and stupid and drunk on being young, or stupid, or drunk, or clever, or beautiful, or ambitious, or simply drunk. Each one of us with our own special superpower. And I'm falling. Falling. Faster now. Accelerating. At 32 feet. Per second. Per second. Down the rabbit hole. Down, down, and into the underworld. And it's a scary place, the underworld. Because when we're out of the cab, I'll walk home alone, and I won't see you for what seems like an age, and I'll suspect you of being with someone else. And why not? I have no special right to you. All that happened is we squeezed into the back of a black cab together, and you laughed. And what is that? That isn't some sort of promise, some contract, right? It's simply... Classic black cab behaviour. It means nothing. Nothing.
I should feel ashamed for reading anything into such a tiny gesture. But that's all we have sometimes, these tiny gestures. And now we're falling, falling back down again into the underworld, alone on another late night street all wet with rain. And the black cabs are cruising the underworld. And none of them are cruising for me. I'm too tired, too shabby, too cheap looking. I'll probably want to go south of the River Styx. And so they kill their yellow lights for others, but not for me. And I walk on. At speed. I'm walking and speeding down, down, deeper into the underworld. And it's a funny old place, the underworld, with no end of pointless, endless, bottomless pits for me to plunge, plummeting. Well, black cabs are cruising the streets like tiny crustaceans and none of them are stopping and they're ignoring me as I keep on falling. Night falls and day falls and I fall face first into a pub. And I'm getting them in at the bar and an elbow does what elbows do. And I'm sorry. Sorry. And I turn and it's... oh. It's you. I, I didn't see you there. Uh, how are you? What, what are you drinking? Oh, no, I'm fine. No, I'm, I'm buying. And the barman's eyes flicker over at us, willing us to fall further. Further, and you say... <sighs> Whatever you're having. And you laugh. And I fall again, and the barman pulls another, and in the blink of an eye, we're squeezed between the jukebox and the door to lose. And we swap numbers. And we make promises. And we keep them. You call me. I call you. And we arrange to meet again, and we do. And now we're eating prawn crackers and noodles. And I've got your full attention. As we swap family stories. Hates and allergies. And we sharpen our enthusiasms on each other, cutting out the crowds around us, but trying not to seem too keen, too sharp. Too open or short in our hatred of the things we condemn. All that simply bore us. While making sure the other knows that nothing's more important than continuing to fall like this. Through the evening and out into the night where it's still light. Because it's summertime now and I've been falling for months. For years. Forever. Into the underworld, which seems so very far away now. Where you've come to save me. To lead me into the world above. I've fallen so far. Can I ever go back? I don't know. I'm not a scientist. These are complex questions. And we don't have the answers. Just do as I say and don't look back. We'll do as I say and don't look back. Because... No one can explain. No one has the answers, Alice. No one knows where the penny goes. No one can explain that magic trick. No one can do the maths. All we know is that we are falling. Together. Falling. Falling. Down, down. Headlong and hurtling. Head over heels. At terminal velocity. To fall. Exhausted. Into, into your, your open, open arms. arms. It starts at 3pm. 1500 hours. He said he wanted you to wear your uniform. No. I don't have it and I can't wear it and I won't be wearing it again. It's not like he's going to know, is he? I said I'd try. <laughs> anyway, congratulations. Well, it's taken us more than a while to follow this one. You know, it's nothing compared to what you've been going through. But it mattered to us. It's not been easy. I mean, it's a miracle. <laughs> and it's to be celebrated. And what kind of mother would I have been anyway? Did you know, even the armour, the body armour, was designed specifically for men? Blood said it was standard across the board. Maybe you weren't wearing it properly. Where did you read that? On Facebook! You never say. So we have to just say it for you. You can get better, Rusheen. There's treatments. More people are talking about it. There's no prizes for sitting tough, keeping calm and carrying on. You have no idea what it was like warding off the papers. Watching the last of Dad's days whilst everything he stood for came under fire. By his own daughter. 
well, sometimes you have to make noise. Yeah, well, we could have done something for you. What kept me quiet? Look, I adapted the body armour as best I could. I stuck shit bits of foam rubber under the shoulder straps to lift it up, but the side panels left me exposed. It weighed more than 20 kilos and while I was sat, and those 90 degree angles forced by the military convoy seats for hours and days on end in the deadly heat like a camel. They said it was likely that it caused multiple sports herniations in my pelvis. I said, sir, I'm getting knocked up when I get home. I don't have a family like you guys do, what? You think he was thrilled at the idea of losing his flight sergeant? You just suck it up and drive on. Well, you asked them? Yeah. But he got blown up. Exploded. Bang, before I got his answer. Maybe the shock triggered it, I don't know. But the pelvic pain was intense. They insisted it wasn't a hernia. Instead, like you've read in the press, they became convinced that it was symptoms of a sexually transmitted disease. They kept asking me if I was having an affair with my commanding officer. Clearly you've been playing around. We'll keep it code red, don't worry. And we'll know more once the tests come back. What did the test say? That I wasn't a whore. The pain got worse. They evacuated me to a regional medical centre in Germany. Where they made me walk and carry on my kit to the plane where the nurses refused to give me the amount of medication prescribed to me for the flight. She could have screamed and fainted or something. No, every time it was being dismissed as female problems. If you have to repeatedly tell your superiors that you're in pain, it just proves they're thinking that women shouldn't serve. So you stayed quiet? Okay. I'm going to keep quiet so I don't ruin someone else's chance of doing this. Meanwhile, writing us letters from the field. Look, I'd lost. Everything. Let everyone down and I became suicidal because I literally kept being told that it was all in my head. There's only so much you can be told before you start to think you are literally going cuckoo. Then finally I decided to go private. I had no idea how to pay for it and that's when I figured I had to speak out. They worked out what was wrong with me. Multiple small pelvic hernias caused by the ill-fitting body armour. They know exactly how to fix it. All eight areas of my abdominal wall. I became hormonally depleted. It caused nerve damage and vaginal atrophy. That's what my medical records show. And that prevents me from having sex and ever getting pregnant. Gee, I am so sorry. And I hadn't even shared about that bit yet. Because it may have been a bit too much. You gonna name it after Dad? Maybe. Depends on what we get. You gonna teach her about patriotism too? Wrap it up in Union Jack and pound your chest with pride. You did everything you could. We depend on people like you. Nah, listen to me. I'm nothing but a weak link. A social engineering experiment. Open up the combat roles to women. Roles should be about ability and not gender. And yet, here we are. You chose to serve your country. I'd have loved to travel the world like you did. It's not a fucking gap here. You didn't have to hear Dad day in and day out talking about you. His heart bursting whilst looking at me like, what have you ever done? He should have had sons. <laughs> you will never know. We happen to be women. This is often very inconvenient. Inconvenient for the military and now that I'm out I'm a continuous inconvenience. Oh please Rasheen. I had to be myself on the same level playing field 
demonstrate my masculine strength, display my confidence, suck it up in layers of uniform and downplay my female existence just so that I could be in the running to succeed. I wanted to work, Marcy. I live my daily life in the face of risk and, and yeah, I didn't lose a limb and I didn't get blown up, but it's... Oh, come home though. <laughs> I hear people don't understand why I look so militant. <laughs> why I walk in straight lines. The ingrained behaviour is at odds with my civilian life and I've got to start again. I want to get to know us. Marcy. About the eulogy. There's something more we have to say and I want to be the one to say it. I'll stand by you when this story comes out. I will. But not at the funeral. It's not the right time. It was a letter, Marcy. There are letters. From? From Dad. If this is about another woman back in the day, I really don't want to know. I can't keep carrying this box of open wounds. He asked me to do this. Asked you what? He sent them to me. He knew I knew. He knew I knew it all and that's why he blamed me and my leaving the military. That was the trigger. He knew that my courage was bigger than him and I can't hold on to that alone anymore. I don't want you all looking at me like the poor relative. The inconvenient woman who couldn't hack the service life and spent the rest of her days as this bad and traitor. I really don't have any more time for this, Rishin. I'll see you there Thursday before 3pm. All I ask is that you're there for him. Wear whatever the fuck you want. I'll read the eulogy. Print something off the internet. He's gay. Dad was gay. Our dad had a long drawn out love affair with a corporal while serving in Norway. They fitted the snow tracks for tanks together so they could drive across the snow quietly, beautifully. And he fell in love. <laughs> and it's all here, Marcy. <laughs> Do you want to keep flying that flag, chanting the national anthem through birth? But I'm telling you, he would have been kicked out for being gay. They denied him, he denied himself. It's not patriotism, it's foolishness, because here we are, about to cremate our father, a man who served with loyalty and pride, and yet he was never able to live with himself the way that he truly was. And here I am. A woman without the tough body I needed to make it to the top. It's not visible. No one talks about it. I don't get invites on to talk shows. The Queen's Garden Party or the Invictus fucking games. But I am telling you, Marseille, I'm dedicating the next wave of my life to truth. You loved us. Yeah. But he didn't love himself. He was more terrified of who he really was and what we would think of him than he was of any enemy. Rasheen, that's enough. Just... <sighs> I'll see you Thursday, 3pm. 1500 hours.
zones are shit here. Bring your own next term. Bear that in mind. Right you are. <coughs> now that were a good one. Only three though. You're getting better. Oh. Two. Maybe not. All right, all right, these stones, though. Only a bad workman blames his jewels. Mm. Come on. Right. <laughs> Four! <laughs> Four! Four! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I still shout that at the car window at golf courses, you know. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. Alan thinks I'm mad, though. If you don't know by now. Nothing wrong with being a little bit mad, Mum says. We should have gone to the sea more when Lily and I were kids. Couldn't have found it, love. I know. Just wish we did it more, I guess. Well, you can go now. I know I can go now. That's not the point yet, Ted. <laughs> we went to Brighton Beach when you were born. Then again to Scarborough Beach when you must have been a what, what? Three and a half? At the time, you, your sister would have been five. Scarborough? Well, it was just before we fully moved down south. And it were packed. It was the hardest day of the year. And you tried shoveling sand in your sister's mouth. <laughs> hey, what, uh, what? You never told me this. Oh, it was one of them moments that me and your man, we just fell about laughing because you were so tiny. Oh, me and your man were sunbathing. I was reading the paper and, and you and your sister were making sandcastles. I can't remember it, but, but your sandcastle got smashed by your sister. I, I think it was an accident or something. And the next thing you know, you've launched yourself at it. I'm a bolt up. Mum is already there trying to trying to pull you off you like a leech on a skin. And, and, and you've yeah. been trying to shove sand in your sister's mouth. <laughs> uh, see, I'm red, I'm red in the face. Uh, pack it in. Both of you, pack it in. Because cause you've just gone for her. Wow. And then, then after you'd calmed down a bit, and your man is still wiping the sand from your sister's mouth. You say, all stubborn and teary, put her in the bin, mummy. Just put her in the <laughs> bin. <laughs> your mum looked at me and I just, oh, Rosie, we just couldn't hold it together. <laughs> put her in the bin? What a thing to say. Oh, oh. <sighs> Oh, yes, Rose. What a delightful child I was. <laughs> oh, yeah. It still tickles me now. Oh, Lily's face. <laughs> she couldn't speak because she still had sand in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get the stubbornness from you. Oh, well, you're your father's daughter. <laughs> Pass us one of them sandwiches in the bag, then. Please. Please. Ta. Oh, cheese and pickle. Our dad. Oh, I like cheese and pickle. I know, but. What? Oh. It's fine. It'll do. I like pickle. So, you and your sister all right? Well, you and your sister all right. Finish your mouthful, Dad. Leave off, will you? You seen your sister? Yeah. She's good. We're going out next Saturday. Sounds good. Yeah. Should be fun to blow off some steam. Where are you going? Oh, 
just a cocktail place I've been wanting to go to. It's underground in a cave sort of thing. Should be good. Couldn't get the time off to come up then. She'll come. Would be nice. She'll come soon. She needs time, Dad. Right. Look, Lily. Look, I'm here. What do you want? A medal? Cheers. Sorry, love. What? You're wearing your Yorkshire rose pin on your Yorkshire jumper. Yeah. Not think it's overkill or anything? No. Did you take that off your coat and put it on your jumper? Nice, of. Ah, oh, just in case people didn't know you were a Yorkshireman. <coughs> Maybe. You part of a cult now you're back in York. No, I am not. I'm proud is all. Oh. Oh, we got that. Crystal clear as kids. E by gone. No, no, no. <laughs> Where has it been since I saw thee? Where? <laughs> You are a blonker. Go on, you start it and I'll echo. <clears throat> Where has the been since I saw thee? I saw thee. On Ilkley Morbatat. Where has the been since I saw thee? Where has the been since I saw Where has the been since I saw thee? Without no trousers on. On Ilkley Morbatat. Where's that? On Il Climovata. Where's that? On Il Climovata. Where the ducks play football. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Il Climor? The Yorkshire Moors. Have I taught nothing about my upbringing? Apart from that song, no. You cheeky son. Joking. <laughs> I should hope so. It's good to see you, Dad. And you, Rosie Roo. You happy here? Yeah, I am. Feeling right back at home. Your accent has got thick, you know. Back to my roots, eh, pet? You're going to be all right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Miss you. Ah, oh, come here. Ah, <laughs> oh, Dad, you're crushing my shoulders. <laughs> my white rose. Yes, Dad, I know. Mm, you are, you are. Shall we see your new place then? Yeah. did you get? Four. Bollocks, did ya? <laughs> Let me look at you. The, um... Uh, further back, further back. Little bit, little bit. Yeah, that's it. Um, when I stand up, could you could you turn? Sorry, I, I spoke over you. You were about to say something it. about. Uh, yes, maybe more like a spin. 
seamless. Is this good? Yes, uh, it all looks proportional. Um, you were about to say something about standing. Uh, yeah, I was. Can I sit back down? Yes, yes, of course. Um, it was just that it's pretty heavy, uh, especially when I'm standing. Uh, I wouldn't worry about that. First week, the body finds a way to adjust. You'll find that muscle builds where it needs to. Oh, yeah? Yes. Should we begin the test proper? Uh, about that. Um, yes. I, uh, never mind. I'll tell you later. It's just that I've been having some doubts about. OK. The OK. Did you manage to um, assemble the equipment that we asked for? Uh, yeah, I've got the, um, the the charging one here. And uh, this is for the pads, I think. But sometimes they get tangled. I'm sorry. Did you hear me earlier? I said I was. Uh, yes. Yes, I, I heard you. You said you could wait till after. Um, yeah. I see that you found a can. Uh, yeah, empty. Good. Um, let's start with a few preliminary questions. Um, as you know, I am the lead researcher on this project. My name is Dr. Carl Fuller. What is yours? My... Your name. Surely you know my name. It's uh, just protocol. Brendan. In a, in a self-contained sentence, if you can, like I did. My name is Brendan. Brendan Rowe. And Brendan, in your own words, could you describe the accident? I've, al I've already described the accident. Just, just for our records. I was in a car crash in the passenger seat. In a little more detail, Brendan. Really? I, we were coming back from a party someplace in Pacifica. My friend, he was driving. There was a bus coming in the opposite direction. We crashed. What else do you want? But I don't see why I'm having to repeat Thank it. Thank you. Um, now, could you hold the arm up to the webcam? Uh, like this? Um, I'm going to activate the back sensors remotely. You may feel a slight shock. Brendan. At this moment, the electrical impulses in your shoulder and spine are reconfiguring, learning how to adapt to the, hang on. Okay, that should be it. How's that feeling? Uh, it's not a nice feeling. Okay, could you be a bit more descriptive, Brendan? Uh, it's like there's a jellyfish on my back. Good, good. Um, I'll lower the voltage now, but the connection should have been established. Okay, can you make a fist for me? Um, I'm not sure if I can... Um... Yeah, no worries at all, if not. This is our first session. No one's marking you. Uh, okay, here goes. Hey, hey, I'm doing it. Excellent work, Brendan, excellent. Is this good? This is very good. This is a very good sign. None of the others have had a sync rate this high at the start. Great. Now, could you could you try holding the can? Um, I'm not sure if I can open the fist yet. Well, we've got time, Brendan. OK. OK, I got it. Now crush it. What? Make a fist again. Won't that? I don't want to. It's not skin, to... Brendan. It's a dense polyfiber membrane. The aluminum won't leave a scratch on it. Are you sure? It, it, it's the next part of the test. And if it does break, I won't feel it, right? It's not wired up so I can feel pain in it? No, no. It's, it's not wired up to your pain receptors. That would be cruel. Yeah. OK. Excellent. Excellent? What do you mean excellent? Uh, there's a failsafe in the system where if it feels like it's putting too much pressure and strain on an object, it releases. Like, um, like an automatic door. Do you understand? You wouldn't want to crush a can accidentally just because you were angry. And uh, say that you were strangling someone, throttling them. 
the arm would send a message back up to your brain saying stop. Has that happened? Of course not. Of course not. We're we're just talking in hypotheticals. You have two hundred thousand dollars worth of tech attached to your shoulder. We have to have safety features, but we have some fun features too: chargers, contactless cards in your fingertips, or my favorite add-on, a touch screen that commands a drone. Drone. Copters, I mean, quadcopters, yeah. RC, whatever you call them, the little helicopters. Why would anyone want that? It's about being ergonomic for tech enthusiasts and kids and the kids of tech enthusiasts. Yes, it's fun. And it's it's only a prototype. Wait, what do you mean kids might want it? Well, children can be amputees too, Brendan. Yeah, no, okay, I know that. I just, it sounds like you're talking about marketing it to kids. Well, you have to understand, we're not the only company researching bionics. Arms, legs, eyes. We're future-proofing, planning for the next decade, not the next month. By marketing to kids? Don't twist my words, Brendan. It's not kind. Next, I'm going to send a series of signals. You won't be able to move or talk because of the interference in the <laughs> blah, blah, blah tech stuff. Basically, I'm going to control your body for a bit. And up. You see, Brendan, we are envisioning a future where a man is not shackled to the body that he was born into. If you want a camera in your eye and you have the money to pay for it, then why not? It's a big decision, sure, but it can be our decision. A tattoo doesn't rub off, a piercing leaves a hole. Okay. Feelings should be coming back to your head. Are we done? Uh, so, uh, what? Are there any more questions or tests? Oh, yes. Sorry, I got completely sidetracked there. Yes, we're all done. Are you still recording? I have to record our sessions, Brendan. It's protocol. Yeah, could you shut it off for a second, though? Sorry, no. Okay, I'd like to be taken off the project. What? Brendan, why? I, I tried to tell you earlier, it's, it's just not what I thought it'd be when I signed up. Brendan, Brendan, it can't all be rainbows and cookies. Mm -hmm. When we sent you the first arm, that wasn't out of the milk of human kindness. It was collecting data. That's what you signed up for. No, I know, I appreciate that, but I would like to stop. <sighs> Offer my place to someone else. You see, that's gonna be tricky for us. Why? Because of the synchronization. This was in your briefing pack, Brendan. I assume that you read it. Wait, what briefing pack? The arm is synchronized to you now your nervous system, your mind believes truly that it is there, which it is. But if you take it off, well, it still feels like it's on. Wait, what? It's a bug, a, a glitch we're working through. Very similar to phantom pain. No, no, Carl, do doctor, I need to- You can, <laughs> of course, of course, if you so choose, conclude our partnership here. Stop the testing, power darn the arm. Your choice if you keep it attached for aesthetics. You'll feel the weight either way. But before you choose to do that, another hypothetical. What if that night when you got into the car, your friend had a chip, a tiny computer that could whiz around his body measuring the blood alcohol levels, that could send a signal that would stop the pedal from engaging in the first place? Doesn't that sound like a better world? So what do you say, Brendan? Will you help me help you? Brendan.
the museum. The gentleman at the door asked me where I had learnt my English in a British school. Where's that then? Port of Spain. <laughs> I left him floundering with Madrid and Barcelona. <laughs> it helps that he can see his face in my shoes. I can see the London dirt on his. The feel of a suit. <sighs> Almost all my back pay went on this. But that is not a problem. I would be needing the fare for the boat. Why would I go home to Trinidad? I am now in the heart of the empire. The king awaits me for tea, does he not? Dawn came with rosy fingers. I have yet to see that in London. Grey sky. Daniel preferred Alexander Pope. Now reddening from the dawn, the morning ray glowed in the front of heaven and gave the day. He carried a small edition of Pope's Homer with him, a prize from school. I got some, uh, Joshua got a few for sports, but the most went to Daniel, a teacher's son after all. That was how prize giving went. We sang a hymn, uh, Daniel scooped up those prizes. Then we stood for the national anthem. Our God, our King, he's still my King. I served in the name of George V. Now that he no longer requires my assistance, I'm visiting his capital, my capital. There wasn't time on the way out, but I thought of this museum often. I thought of its stories as I headed towards the cradle of civilization. The land between the two rivers. The land of Ashurbanipal and his lion hunt. Daniel, Joshua and myself. Three boys from Trini sent by our English king. Sent to kill the Turks in Mesopotamia. To weaken the German cause. Too neat. Too simplistic. Maybe. So a Trinidadian, a British subject, and a British soldier walk into a bar. The barman says, Drinking alone, eh? <laughs> I contain multitudes. I am all those things. And perhaps now a little more. I am acutely aware that that confuses some. I'll give you a friend at the museum entrance. I am British. Make no mistake. I just speak a language better than some of you, some of us. Dress better than some of us, but that does not make me better. We all bleed red. Dawn came with rosy fingers. Trench warfare, dry, hot flies. Shouldn't I be used to the heat, used to the flies? In Palestine, they came not for the sugar and my rum punch but for our blood drying in the sun. The sun kisses Trinidad, leaves our island warm and lush. In Palestine, it slaps the hard desert and bounces off. No love there. The shells and gutting gunfire were so close overhead, it sounded like trains. It sounded as if somebody had put a roof over a trench. I swear I nearly reached up to touch it. To take a hot piece of metal out of the sky as a souvenir. Nearly, we fought, we won. We buried Joshua in that hard earth. He died, but we won. Our sons are the price of being part of the family. They were medals. And perhaps if not in Westminster, in Port of Spain, there were speeches. But today, I have walked past everything we saw in picture books. I have seen them with my own two eyes. I have seen monuments of long dead white men, but I have not seen us in London. Not in newsreels, not in magazines, not in advertisements on the tube. No, of course I have seen black faces, brown faces and Chinamen, but only on the streets. I have seen an empire, but not a family. So I came here. <laughs> I have dreamt of this place long ago. Ceilings higher than the London sky. All the study. 
Oh, the knowledge. I've waited so long for this. Dawn came with rosy fingers. When peace came, we were shipped to Italy to await our journey home. I carried Joshua's letters to his mother. I had copied them out and sent them on. His blood was still on the originals. Hundreds of men waiting in Taranto for the boat. And as we were men, we were put to work. Unloading ships, digging latrines, cleaning latrines. 81 medals in the regiment and we were stuck digging excrement. So we downed our tools. Daniel and the other NCOs wrote out our demands. The pay rise that the regiment quartered next to us got. The promotion that we would do. An end to mean your work for fighting men. Unless the white soldiers also did it. They called it mutiny. I call it dignity. Achilles chose to retire to his tent. We chose not to shovel feces. Dawn came with rosy fingers and a ring of bayonets. The worsted shares arrested 60 men at gunpoint. They all went to jail. They're still there. Except Daniel. He always stood out. Always won the prize. Shot at dawn. I have his letters too. And our demands. I do not know what the authorities would tell Daniel's father. I can't go back to Trinidad. I am a British soldier. I would be a lie back in Trinidad. I will not lie about what happened. Nostalgia is not used correctly. Nostos is homecoming. Altos is pain. My homecoming will contain too much pain. There is no tomorrow. Only the past. When dawn's rosy fingers were still to come. I have applied for a reader's card here. I will find all the books on Empire. All the corners, smallest corners, darkest corners. Our food, our old fates, our music. I will stay here to explore all that we know. I want to find a very old book. Something so obscure that I will need to take it back to the desk to ask them to cut the pages. When I find books like that, and I will know them when I see them, the forgotten, the unconsidered, I will take out a single letter and put it inside and return the volume along with the others at the end of my day. The staff will get used to me. They will remark on how well read I am for a Negro. They will do it to my face. They will consider it praise. And all the while, Daniel and Joshua's letters will be spread throughout the volumes, thousands of the volumes, waiting for when the right people come looking, grieving, questing, hungry men and women, looking for the full story in all the colors. I do not need to return home. I have no home. But this place, this is my house, our house. And dead men have all the time in the world. Chip and Smith. What are you doing here? Regulating Branch called me this afternoon. Are you mad? Said they were holding you pending the outcome of their investigations. You can't be here, although have you done? And as your commanding officer, sir, there are a few formalities that I need to complete. Sir. Understood. Yes, sir. This is madness, Tom. You know. Understood. Like. Midshipman Smith. Understood, sir. Good. Then let's get down to business, shall we? Yes, sir.
Charlie, what's happened? I didn't tell. Told me you were here, that's all. Something about them receiving a report and needing to investigate? Someone snitched. Snitched? Yeah, snitched. Snitched, crossed. Informed the Royal Navy regular in Blanc that they had reason to believe that I was gay. Shit. Exactly. Who would do that? I don't know. You must have some idea. No, no idea at all. And do they? Don't know what? Do regulating branch have reason to believe that you're gay? Hmm. Well, I suppose I did kiss the officer full on the lips. Hold out a limp wrist and say, you've got me back to rights, but I've cuffed you now and ravish me. I'm all yours. For fuck's sake, Charlie. Do you think I might give him a game or This is serious. I'm in detention. I realise that. Anyway. Even if they don't have good reason, they're having a damn good poke around, that's for sure. How do you mean? They turned my quarters upside down. Emptied every drawer on the floor, mattress upended. They have rooted through everything, all my personal stuff. Do they find anything? I don't think so. I'm very careful. That's good. They've taken anything with a name on it though. Postcards, letters, my diary. Your diary? Yeah, my diary. I didn't know you kept a diary. Well, now you do. Is that... I mean, is that sensible? In the circumstances? In the circumstances of me being gay in the Navy, you mean? Yes, I suppose. Look, there's nothing to worry about. There's no names in there. Not the sort that they're interested in, anyway. I'm in the Navy. I'm gay. I'm not stupid. There's no names, phone numbers or addresses. What about us? What about us? Do you not mention us? Oh god, now he's worried. Dude, he's not mentioned. No, no, I didn't mean it like that. Look. They're not going to be able to connect you to me. Unless, of course. Unless, of course, what? Well, unless, of course, you make it easy for them. By coming here, for example. So what if you're my commanding officer? You're still not supposed to be here. You're drawing attention to yourself, Lieutenant. I just wanted to see you. I just wanted to see that you were all right. I know, but you have to be more careful. And are you all right? Are you okay? Don't you know? My unremarkable Navy career is hanging by a thread, if not hold below the waterline already. I'm being held in a detention centre while the bastards contact everyone I've ever known, asking for intimate details about my private life. And my idiot lieutenant boyfriend First in class at Dartmouth, promotion pending, is determined to sabotage his own stellar career, despite my best efforts to keep the regulators off his tail. So apart from all that, I'm absolutely fine. I'm sorry. It's so good to see you, Tom. But you shouldn't be here. You can't be. Promise me that you won't come here again. I can't promise that. Please, just do it for me. Have they questioned you yet? My interview, you mean? Is that what they've called it? Do you, or have you ever, taken it up the arse? Seriously, <laughs> more or less. A few other questions besides. Christ, I know. I'm sorry. Don't you be. A surprise, we all know what to expect. What did you tell them? Well, if I'd answered truthfully, it would have been the end of my career, obviously. So, what did you say? What can you say? No, don't be ridiculous. What are you talking about? All the time, you're thinking about this big bastards. All the time, you're thinking about you and wanting your arms around me. All the time, feeling as though I was betraying you. Betraying me? Yeah. Betraying me how? That doesn't make sense. It does, though. But how you didn't tell them anything. Exactly. By not telling them anything about you. About me. About us. It's a betrayal, isn't it? A betrayal of the idea of us. Of our future. Well, isn't it? I would have said exactly the same thing that you did. Everybody does. That's the problem. We all know the deal when we sign up. I know. I know. Being gay isn't an option. But what if not being gay isn't an option either? You just need to hold your nerve. I wish it was that easy. Keep telling them what you've already told them. Keep lying, you mean? They've got nothing on you, Charlie. They're fishing. You just need to hold tight. Hmm? What if 
I do have something on you. You said you've always been careful. I know. And I have. But they're going to interview anyone I've ever spoken to when I've been here. Anyone I've even so much as glanced at. It's like having a, a pack of sniffer dogs set on you. Perhaps I could speak to them. What? Put in a good word for you or something. You really have taken a leave of your senses. Even a fucking rear admiral wouldn't try that. They can't do this to they you. They can, Tom. You know they can. And they'll do it to you too if you're more careful. You have to be more careful, Tom. And there's something I haven't told you. What? They have your letter. What letter? Your letter. Your letter to me. But I've only ever sent you one letter. Yes. And you destroyed it like I asked you to. You did destroy it, Charlie, didn't you? Oh, Christ. I'm so sorry, sorry, Tom. I couldn't. I just couldn't. It was the loveliest letter anyone has ever sent me in my life. I couldn't just destroy it. I take it everywhere. Until now, of course. You idiot, Charlie. You complete and utter idiot. At least she didn't sign it. Of course I signed it. Not properly though. Not with your full name. All my love T. That's what you wrote at the end. T could be anyone. It doesn't have to be Tom, does it? They must be suspicious. They must want to know who T is. They must have asked. No, they asked all right. And asked and asked. And? I told them T was a girl back home. Tracy. Tracy. I'm sorry. I'm sure you've been called much worse. And they believed you? Oh God, no. They can't prove it isn't. To hell with them! They've offered me a medical discharge, low key. They have? If I tell them who T is. If I don't tell them and they find out themselves, it's the full treatment. Dishonourable discharge. Dismissal with disgrace. That's blackmail. They suspect, Tom. I don't know what exactly, but they suspect. They're probably already going through the crew list to see whose names begin with a T. Then they'll interview them all, get handwriting samples and try and match them to your letter. Fucking bastards! We shouldn't have to live like this. I know. You should tell them. Tell them what? Tell them whatever you like. Tell them you were propositioned by a senior officer. Tell them you weren't interested but you kept the letter for insurance in case he tried again. Tell them whatever they need to hear but you mustn't cover for me. I won't allow that. Lieutenant Tom Davies, I will be the judge of whether or not I cover for you. And though I don't care much for my own middling career, I'll not have you throw yours away. In that case then, I'll have to do it myself. Don't do anything silly, please Tom. Charlie, I love you. I love you too, but we can't say that here. Charlie Smith, I love you. Tom, are you mad? The God will hear. Midshipman Charlie Smith, I love you. And I want to spend the rest of my life with you.